Hi, this is Class Creatives, and here we're going to talk about this Virtue Camera app. It is a really great application that uh, previously you would have to be spending thousands and thousands of dollars to motion capture a uh, camera movement or a very fancy camera rig. You can kind of see Walt Disney was testing this on some uh, animated features like Wreck-It Ralph, uh, where you have a camera rig and that animation is motion captured based on the user. Uh, moving the camera rig around. Sometimes you have some automated ones like the one on the right in some higher production environments. Um, obviously, if you're uh, doing something on your own, you may want to have a cleaner solution. And this Virtue Camera app for a uh, relatively inexpensive price, uh, around $5 or so on the iOS App Store, uh, is really great. It's a really clean website. It's a relatively new tool. It's available for Maya and Blender. And in our demonstration here, I'm going to be talking about how to use it for Maya. Uh, there's some very simple instructions on how to set up the Python script um, and bring this, uh, bring this tool right into Maya for you. You just click the button. It starts serving um, to your phone over, over Wi-Fi, and then you'll be able to start using the tool. So the website has um, some pretty nice, easy to install instructions. And uh, you can go ahead and go to the website and check that out. And there's also a support link. Um, he's been doing some pretty nice updates. He recently did an update for ZUP on uh, Maya for Unreal. And when you start the Maya session, this is kind of how it's going to look like. So I have a couple of uh, screens here so you can see how it looks on the phone as well as what the interface looks like. Clicking the button just kind of uh, starts uh, utilizing the camera that you've set up in Maya, you can pick which camera you're going to be using and then it's going to prompt you to move the uh, camera around to basically start tracking your camera inside of Maya and you can kind of see that it mimics the movements that you're doing on your phone and then once you link it up uh, you can start uh, testing with that play button at the top to kind of get familiar with your scene and your animation and then there's a red play button underneath uh, which will allow you to start recording your session it does a countdown timer and then it basically will record your movement and then once it does that it'll bake the keys down into Maya you can choose to keep that or you can even re-record another session and remove the keys and you can continuously doing that back and forth and you can scrub in the app and you can check your animation once you unlink it it's all baked down into the Maya scene and you can basically uh, tweak those keys or you can export them right into an FBX file you can bring that into Unreal into Sequencer we'll do a future video where we talk about how to do that uh, and bring that material uh, into Unreal so you can have some camera movement in there. So I also wanted to cover a little bit about uh, how to set up multiple cameras for a scene. So I have three cameras set up in this scene, kind of the same workflow. I've set up individual virtue cameras, but I've also set up some keyframe cameras as well just so I can get a rough idea of the framing. Um, so then I go ahead and select the virtue camera in the app. You can do a, di a few different takes. Uh, just to basically kind of get a natural motion that I like. You can remove the keys and it will just save over the take each time. You just have to make sure that your camera is linked each time when you're going into the recording phase. And it always will give you a countdown timer uh, when you hit the red record button. And the uh, non-red record button is just something you can use to kind of um, kind of practice before you actually do the initial animation take for the camera. So once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and exit out of the app and it will automatically set those keys for you. I did notice that in the latest version, if you have multiple cameras set up, if you um, go to a second or third camera, it actually doesn't retain those keys. So that might be coming in a future update. Um, so keep that in mind if you are working with multiple cameras like this that you may want to export out that camera information to an FBX file um, just so you don't lose that information. So in this particular case I'm just setting up each camera individually um, and then going ahead and doing that same process. So for a camera take like this where it was a lot closer to the foot I really recommend that you set up the camera beforehand so just positioning it roughly on the frame that you would like in terms of what you're framing the foot in this case because if you start at the origin and then you try to move the camera over to the character it's going to be pretty difficult 
uh, for the camera to track. So even with the very close up shot like this, that's very specific, it might take a few tries uh, to get your focal length and to get the camera framing exactly the way you like it. Uh, but luckily it, it's very um, robust and pretty forgiving in terms of doing multiple takes. So for a more challenging shot like this, that's more closer uh, to a specific shot, um, you basically will want to kind of set that camera up beforehand in your Maya scene, just in the rough position. So I kind of did that as well with this longer shot. And so then when you have your camera kind of set up roughly in the rough position that you are wanting to capture that information from, then you can go ahead and uh, start serving that camera up and um, kind of just starting to do that same process. So what I did was I kind of duplicated each camera and made three of them and then roughly positioned each one into the rough angle that I wanted to capture. And then I started serving up that animation into the uh, camera app, the Virtue Camera app, and then I started to record uh, my motion. So initially you have kind of the rough angle in mind in Maya, and then you're kind of um, creating the zoom ins and a little bit of that handheld look with the Virtue Camera app. So it really does take the place of having to animate a lot of uh, fine detail in a camera move. I recommend really that if you are using this app, it's really great to add very subtle nuance animations. So like small little truck ins, little zoom ins, and a little bit of that handheld motion uh, that you might get if you look at some cinematic movie scenes. Um, that's what this camera app is really great for. If you're doing really big sweeps and really big motions, it might be easier to just keyframe those. But if you're trying to create animation that has like a handheld steady cam kind of feel with very subtle movements and subtle uh, motion, a camera app like this with motion capture is going to be really a lot faster than trying to hand key a lot of that kind of handheld movement that you might want to have to have a keep alive type of camera. I think if you really want a steady shot that just zooms in very smoothly, you're better off keyframing it. But for something like this, you can kind of see uh, that handheld movement and it really does have that motion capture feel that you would get from a very cinematic kind of shot. So uh, depending on the type of camera style you're going for on your shot, this app is really great and it does achieve a lot of that nuance that you get from a lot of cinematic AAA games today that are kind of doing this with a much more expensive uh, type of rig. So even for movies that are 3D, uh, like that Wreck-It Ralph example, uh, this is a pretty complicated system uh, that is very easy to use with this particular iOS app. Unfortunately, it's only for iOS at this time um, I'm not sure if he's going to be supporting anything for uh, Android. I know, I know there's been a big demand in the comments for that, but uh, if you do have an iOS device, it works really great. And um, you can really get some really nice uh, movement out of this. It looks pretty professional. Um, go ahead and kind of show you just a few of these rough play blasts that I use. Even if you're using this for a rough layout, if you're just kind of roughing in a cinematic and then you're going to keyframe the cameras later, um, it's still a great workflow to be able to use uh, this app even just to rough in a rough camera. So even if you're not using this for final cameras, for something like this where we just have the rough mannequin that's kind of just planning out shots, you can really plan out some really nice angles and get some really nice movement in there without having to uh, do a lot of extra time to keyframe a lot of those subtle movements. And you can really get a nice cinematic feel for uh, the actual camera itself. So the only thing that I've been noticing really is just um, not retaining that keyframe animation when you have multiple cameras in the scene, uh, but I'm sure that's probably going to be in a future update and you can um, kind of put that into a workflow yourself uh, by just exporting those out individually after you've selected each camera individually. You can just export that animation out. Um, and then you'll get kind of this really nice cinematic kind of uh, keep alive animation. If you take a look at the tracking, it'd be pretty hard to emulate something like this with this kind of movement if you were going to keyframe this. It really does have that handheld feel and it does have a little bit of that cinematic quality that you might see in some of your you know, favorite movies that you see in some scenes. So it's a really powerful app. Uh, I recommend that you check it out. 
And uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next lecture. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and learn more from us in our next videos. See you next time.